When it comes to the game industry, it's becoming increasingly frustrating to be both a consumer and a retail worker, seeing day in, day out the same kinds of shady tactics that both publishers and consoles alike will use to try and force player loyalty in their favour. Right now, the big issue for me comes through the pre-release saga that is Call of Duty Black Ops 3. As a major franchise at this point, there is no need for a market skew as the player base is sufficient on both major consoles as well as PC to know that demand will be high regardless of how the game is marketed. It's strange how AAA titles, the kind of games that are backed by publishing companies that have seemingly bottomless vats of money to invest, cry the need for yet more regardless of what that entails for the consumers, the players from new to long-standing fans. For years, Call of Duty has seen a favouring on Xbox, seeing map packs released early on their consoles, meaning that both PC and PlayStation gamers must wait a couple of extra weeks before they can access the new content. There is no reason for this to happen apart from the fact that Microsoft could pay for the luxury. Now, with Black Ops 3, we're seeing the same happening the other way around, with map packs getting early access on the PlayStation, with the Xbox and PC gamers sat waiting in the sidelines for new content. There is no excuse for this kind of business, no reason why it's justified, and yet it seems both Microsoft and Sony are willing to pay Activision a lot of money to make it so, purely so they can try and take a bigger intake of gamers on their consoles. There is no thought given to the player base that already exists on either side, being punished for simply not having the right console. As an Xbox player myself, I reaped the unearned rewards for years with Xbox early access to Call of Duty maps, and now because the tables have turned, I found myself at a supposed disadvantage. Even though in the grand scheme of things it actually changes nothing, I can happily wait a couple of extra weeks for new maps to join the roster. However, in a world that seems increasingly obsessed by convenience, it is easily a huge factor now in console sales for new players as well as those who are looking to upgrade to the new generation. The EA Access deal with Microsoft is most definitely a marketing move to try and buy out the loyalty of the long-standing sports gamers. With the most notable deal Sony have done with Activision, both with regards Destiny and now Call of Duty, it would appear that they are hungry to take a slice of the hardcore FPS gamer market, but using content we all get as collateral. For years, Sony has had access to bonus content in Assassin's Creed games locked to their platforms for a time after launch, and now we're seeing an entire game held hostage by Microsoft for a year, Rise of the Tomb Raider, a game that was made popular in the first place by the PlayStation. We're seeing consistently that developers and more commonly producers are willing to whore out their content to the highest bidder without the slightest care for the gamers who actually look to play their games. With consistent disrespect to both the platforms and players that made titles what they are today, it's growing increasingly difficult to be an impartial member of a retail team that looks to try and provide a fair and tailor-made experience for all gamers. It doesn't help that retailers also get in on this action, frequently seeing content removed from the game to be given as a pre-order or early access bonus when bought with retailers who ultimately were the highest bidder. Again, with Call of Duty, we see this taking shape with the Nuketown map being held to ransom by game in the UK and stores like GameStop out in the US. Nuketown at this point is a map that has become a cornerstone of the multiplayer experience with the Black Ops franchise, seeing itself having its second redesign for the new release, and yet, for a set period of time post-launch, this map will only be available to those who purchase the game through specific retailers. I pre-bought my copy through the Xbox store as I used the game share feature with my partner, and yet, because I didn't buy it from the store that only sells physical copies, I wouldn't have access to Nuketown at launch. This is despite the fact that I have played both previous titles in the series from launch and have a long-standing history with the franchise as a whole anyway, but because I wanted to prioritise a digital copy of the game, I therefore was punished because I didn't purchase in my place of work, a completely ludicrous practice for sure. Then to make things even more ridiculous, we come to what has outraged me more than anything with the Sony deal for Black Ops 3. See, no matter who I'm dealing with as a member of the sales team, if someone were to want to get access to the season pass for the game on the Xbox, I can't sell them one. As part of the terms Sony set with their deal, only the PlayStation is allowed to call the season pass by its name, with the Xbox being forced to call it simply £35 Xbox credit. It doesn't matter that both I the retailer and you the consumer know that it's still the season pass. I cannot actually refer to it as such nor sell it under that name. In an utterly ridiculous move to try and further undermine the sales of Black Ops through any Xbox, Sony have written a completely ridiculous addition to their terms for a brand deal, creating a whole world of pointless problems for their gamer yet again. Regardless of whether you buy the season pass on the PlayStation or the credit on the Xbox, you're still getting the same content, only slightly delayed in release on the Xbox platform and, for some stupid reason, under a different name. With both retailers and console creators trying to force the hands of gamers to keep their business afloat, we're seeing again and again with increasing frequency that gamers are forced to wait longer for content with no good reason, apart from happening to have picked the wrong side for a particular title. 
we, the consumers, are not allowed to just enjoy the content we want to enjoy because these companies are so hell-bent on not only making profit on the releases, but making as much profit as they can. Loyalty means nothing anymore, and neither does the fact that we paid the same premium amount for the content. There's no telling what part of your game will be missing either entirely or for a set period post-launch. Sadly, it seems like there's nothing we can do to stem the tide as these practices are so ingrained now in the system that it's unavoidable with any major release. And so here we are with this behemoth of a title set to launch in a matter of hours. And yet there are going to be players out there who won't be permitted the full experience. Players who have enjoyed and supported the franchise for a long time, or players who are finally able to join the ranks of gamers as new bloods aren't going to get their full money's worth, all down to the fact that the marketing and brand deals are now so much more important, supposedly, than providing the gamers the full experience that we paid for at launch. It's strange realising that as capitalism creeps further and further into an industry that is still fighting to get accepted by the outside world, the people who have helped make it what it is and continue to support its growth are the ones that are repeatedly shafted over it. Never before has an honest indie title looked so inviting when the developers are so eager to just share their project with you that they don't care what platform you run, they just want you to experience their work. No missing content, just every penny of what you paid for delivered at the point of purchase. An honest practice that really speaks volumes as is honoured by those who don't sit on money they can burn, who take a gamble on every project they develop, caring more for the experience they deliver than the scale of the profit margin it can bring them.